Next, we're going to talk about section 2.4 email protocols. So there are several protocols that are used to implement email. The first one we're going to talk about is SMTP. Sorry about that typo there. No, that was correct. All right, so how does email work? Email is also a really old web or internet application, um, and these protocols were defined a long time ago to exchange mail. Um, there are kind of three components of email. On, on one side, there's the mail reader, which is a program that downloads messages from your email server and displays them. Um, this program also typically will allow you to compose, edit messages, and, and send them. These are things like um, Outlook or Thunderbird, if you guys have ever used any of those. So these kinds of programs implement this. Now, these days, most of the user agents, it's the first thing we're talking about here, are web-based. So Gmail, Hotmail, the user agent is a web application itself. The second component here are the mail servers. So that's the hardware that actually exchanges, uh, stores, and sends email messages to transfer uh, email. Um, they have a message queue of outgoing messages that are waiting to be sent, and that's what's shown in the, in the diagram in the green. Uh, the third piece of this email system is the protocol that defines the rules and the format of messages exchanged between email servers and user agents. Um, and one, this first protocol we're going to talk about is SMTP, the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Let's talk about how it works. Again, as we look at this, think about how this compares and contrasts with FTP and HTTP. Um, it's an old protocol. It's similar uh, in that it's, we're exchanging information between client and server, but it's uh, but it's different. There's some different design choices. All right, so you can see all the details of this in RFC uh, 2821. You can Google that and, and see it all. This is an overview. SMTP uses TCP because we want to reliably transfer email messages. We don't want any data lost. It operates on port 25, so that's well-defined, and everybody who's going to implement this protocol knows you've got to be listening on port 25 to be running an SMTP server. The T SMTP allows the direct transfer of messages between a sending server and a receiving server. And there are actually three phases to this transfer. The first phase is the handshaking phase, which is a greeting where the one server, the client server, greets the, the server. Um, the second part is the transfer of messages. So at this point, messages are actually exchanged from the client server to the server server, right? depending on which role they're playing. And then there's a closure phase where they actually close down that connection. Notice again, it's a command response cycle um, or paradigm where the commands are sent in ASCII text and response re responses are sent back which are status codes and phrases saying whether or not the, uh, the thing worked, whether or not the command successfully executed. Uh, one big difference here from what we've seen before is that only 7-bit ASCII is used, meaning you only have 7 bits of possible combinations to encode any data. The other protocols we looked at, FTP, HTTP, use 8-bit ASCII, um, so you can embed a lot more, encode a lot more information with that. Um, all right, let's look at an example. So we can imagine that Caleb, because no Caleb Glass, is sending a message to Ethan. Um, and this is sort of the uh, one scenario of how this might go down. That Caleb is using some user agent on step one, which might be Outlook, might be a web browser like Gmail, to compose his message. Um, he's going to, when he clicks send, he's going to send that message to his mail server uh, and submit that in the queue to be sent. Now, um, this 
first exchange is going to happen over SMTP. All right. The next step is on step three, um, this mail server is going to act as the client and this mail server is going to act as the server and that message is going to be sent over SMTP from the, this mail server to this mail server. By opening up an SMTP connection, doing the handshake, exchanging messages, and then closing the connection. Um, while they have that open, they might exchange other messages besides this one if there were other messages that need to be sent between the two servers. At this point, this mail server is going to send um, the would, would need to forward that message to Ethan and his user agent. Um, we're going to talk about this later, but the, the issue here is that this user agent may not be running all the time. And really, Ethan is not going to get his mail until he checks his mail and downloads it. So his mail is going to stay at his mail server until Ethan invokes his user agent to read the messages and download them from this mail server. And we'll look at this later, but we'll see that there are actually a couple of different protocols to, that support that. Things like POP3 and IMAP, they do this last step of checking the mail. Also, HTTP does that. Yes? So SMTP is only 204? Right. Now, if there were several other mail servers in yeah, yeah. there, it, they would have to do that as well. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you a sample SMTP interaction um, of the text that's actually exchanged to do this kind of thing. All right, so S stands for server. Um, and C is for client. So in this case, the um, the server is at this this is its status and its uh, address, its domain. Uh, the client says hello and says its name. The server has a status message. It says hello back, pleased to meet you. <clears throat> the client says this I'm sending mail from this address. Um, the server says, okay, that sender's okay. This is the recipient. The server says, okay, that's okay. The recipient's okay. The client says, data. The server says, okay, enter the email message and end it by putting a period on a line by itself. So that period on a line by itself is, that means this is the end of the message. So, do you like ketchup? How about pickles? That's the body of the email message. We put a period. That's the end. The message is accepted. The client says quit. And then the, this quit and the closing is the, the third phase. So, you see the handshake at the top. And then the exchange of messages here. And then the, the closure down here. It's kind of a funky protocol. Um, but this is old protocol. This is how it's used. There are a lot of other options that are involved that we didn't see here like just putting a subject line, um, putting CC or BCC. Those are our other commands that aren't listed here, but but could be added. Um, questions on this? Why are they not spelled hello, Ryan? Um, I think all of the data, all, all the commands are four-digit commands, four-character commands, so that's why they abbreviated it. Um, you can do SMTP yourself if you telnet to some server name on port 25 and then enter those commands like we saw before to actually submit those. Now most, the spam is a big deal these days, so most SMTP servers will not accept you anonymously. You have to log in with some credentials, so you could do that here at school, uh, but then you, it knows who you are and it could, it could shut you down if, if, if you appear to be spamming, if you made a program to do this, all right? Don't do that. Okay, a couple characteristics here that are important. Um, it does use persistent connections. So because we're going to ex exchange a lot of data, um, we use one connection to do multiple messages. That's different than HTTP. Secondly, it's the 7-bit ASCII instead of 8-bit. Uh, and lastly, that this CRLF means carriage return line feed. So that carriage return line feed period, carriage return line feed, which means a period on a line all by itself, that means the end of a message. Right? That's how it delineates that. <clears throat> Looking at um, SMTP versus HTTP, notice these similarities. They're both command response style. 
They both use ASCII, but SMTP uses 7 instead of 8-bit. SMTP is much more of a push, where we're pushing from the client to the server, um, whereas HTTP is much more of a pull paradigm, where we send a request and then pull it down. Um, HTTP supports single part messages, but uh, SMTP actually allows multiple objects to be sent in one connection um, so that multiple parts happen in one message. This is the format of the mail message. Uh, this is defined at RFC 822. We have the header lines, a blank line, and then the body. The header has these kinds of things that you're used to seeing, to, from, subject, lots of other different SMTP commands. And then the body is the message of itself, which is ASCII characters only. So you can see this was defined a long time ago when email was a much simpler thing. Um, so we've got to go th jump through some hoops to get the fancy email that we have today. Um, now I want to show you this last bit, which is the mail access product protocols. This is how you do this last hop here. How do you access, download your email after it's been forwarded through all the email servers? So your email is at your, is on your server, um, your recipient's mail server. So in this case, how does Ike, using his user agent, pull down his email messages? There are several options here. The big three we're going to talk about are POP, IMAP, and HTTP. Um, POP and IMAP are older protocols that have been defined in RFCs um, that are just for pulling down this email. HTTP, you know, is a lot is a more modern way of, of having a, a web interface that pulls these messages down. But really behind the scenes, I expect those um, Hotmail, Gmail are connecting to this server and, and they may, may or may not be getting this information out of the server using POP or IMAP. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at POP3. Um, POP3 is kind of the simple way of doing this. There's a, an authorized phase where you see the client server here are going to accept the username and password. If that successfully works, then there's a transaction phase where the client can say, list my messages, list them out, one, two, three, four. You can, the client can say, okay, retrieve message one. Um, and then the server will send it back all the contents of message one. So again, this is a pretty simple text-based protocol. You could understand it and implement it pretty quickly because it's just text. You see, these are the commands that you can send, list, retrieve, delete, quit. Just the basics of what you want to do to uh, with your email. Questions on, on this? I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't know if you guys have ever used POP3, um, but it's a really simple protocol. Um, if you've ever set up an email program, you'd have to enter this, um, the settings for your server to check it. And um, if you do that, you enter something like, usually the name of the server is going to be like pop3.gmail.com or whoever your email provider is. Yeah? I think I remember it. You might have seen it. The, the other big one uh, competitor here is IMAP. IMAP is a lot more complicated. It allows the server to have folders. It's not stateless. Uh, POP3 is stateless, so it's kind of simple. It has POP3 has two modes listed here. You can download and delete the messages, and they're not on the server anymore, or download and keep. Whereas IMAP gives you a lot more control. Um, it's stateful, like I said, but it means you can record state across sessions. You can have names of folders, mappings between message IDs and folder names. Lots of complexities, uh, but in today's web, you're almost always using a web-based client to do this, and so all this step is kind of hidden from you. So these are the, the big internet protocols, I want you, uh, email protocols, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, and then kind of HTTP thrown in there as a, that's kind of how we're doing it now because everything's web-based, but these are the big three internet uh, email protocols.